God is so good. God is so good. Uh, I have I have had the opportunity to in the last, and I sometimes I reflect on things that that are immediate in my mind, and and uh, but the last the last ninety six hours, I have been with um, some strong believers. And I've been with some people who they are not believers. Um, and and such is the case when you get around corporate America. Um, people from um, all over the country, some from out of country, uh, quite a few people from London were there, uh, Pastor Don. So they were a lot of fun. I got to meet some of them and and see them repeatedly and and I would give them a hard time just for fun and humor, but <laughs> but it was it was interesting to mix in, with people. Um, it and so when you're in that environment, you're away from home, and you know you you're away from church, and um, it's good to have people around you that are also believers. Um, we went to some, and I'll just, this is kind of what, this will dovetail with what we're going to bring today, but, um, but we went to some, what they call after, you know, at the end of uh, like an after the day conference party. And it was a, these were mixers and, and where you get around peers and sit down and, and have a meal and, and had you know, just do some things that, help break the ice and help people to come together. And, and it, you know, for me, it lasts about an hour and a half and, and I'm, I'm tapping out see y'all tomorrow kind of thing. But, um, but it's good to, to get back home. Um, and I have some people that, that I work with who are associates of mine and strong believers. And we, we talk the word and, we talk Jesus and, and it, it, it's a help. It's a help. God's people that, you know, the church and they may not look like me and may not look like you, but, but they have a love and a passion for God. Um, and it's a blessing. It's a blessing. There's light there. This is something tonight that, that we talked about in April and I, I wanted to revisit it because it, I'll tell you when I read this, it makes me want to get my nose in the carpet and get along with the Lord and, and pray this word because I, I want his word just to seep into my spirit. I want his goodness just to seep into my life. Um, God is, he's not far away. He's near. He's, he's not obtuse. He's not, he's not distant. He doesn't, he's, he's, I think for some, maybe they, they don't know God because they don't, they don't entertain God. They don't, they don't think about the Lord. Um, and, and maybe even for new Christians, it's, you know, when you say to them, you need a, a personal relationship with God, it sounds cliche, but it's not really, it, it has, there's a deep meaning there. God is, he's not some distant uh, thing or, um, you know, that, that pops in, you know, and, when, when someone passes in your life or when there's some major relationship or, you know, there's a need in your life. And though God's there for that. And, you know, he, he loved us when we were yet sinners, right? Christ died for us, it says to us, but he's, he is close and he, he is easy to find and, and he wants us to follow him. I recently <laughs> um, was able to observe a, a a bloodhound kind of a dog and track an animal, and it was amazing to me. I I, I watched 
I watched it. It was a her, it was a girl, girl dog, and and for all you women out there, <laughs> uh, um, but she didn't miss a drop. It was amazing to watch her. Yeah, God doesn't. Want, he, he wants us to be close to him. He wants us to find him. He wants us to be part of him. He wants to be part of, of you, part of me. And he's, he is as, he is as close as we, you know, we say this, but he is as close as the mention of his name. In fact, throughout um, every day of my life, I, I will just, I'll just speak that name, Jesus. Um, it's a blessing to me to remember him throughout the day. Uh, we're fallible. You know, we, we're human. But as believers, he's given us a new life. In Ephesians, and I want to read this. Um, in, in Ephesians, and we're going to go to chapter four, first of all, <clears throat> um, bear with me. It is, it is a passage that, that we did go through and, and I am, there are some pieces that I really want to just focus on today. Um, I, in verse chapter number four, Ephesians four, we'll start in four, verse 26. Um, and these are some things here. And the verse 25 says, therefore, each of you. And, and anytime we see, and we're going to see another, another therefore here in just a minute. But anytime I see the word therefore, I need to stop and back up and see what that therefore is pointing to. And, you know, it may be a few passages, you know, one that is probably a, a favorite for many of us is Romans chapter eight, verse one. It starts off and says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Right. And so here we find in Ephesians chapter four, verse, verse 25, therefore each of you, um, and it gives us some things that, that we need to do, but. But let's, let's start here in verse 26. In your anger, do not sin. Don't let the sun go down when you're still angry. And don't give the devil a, a foothold. Don't give place to the devil. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work. Do something that is useful with their hands so that they can also share with others who are in need. And this is the NIV version of this. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful, helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. These are things that, that the Lord is speaking to us individually. It tells us, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. Just as Christ, God forgave you <clears throat> through Jesus Christ. And it goes into chapter five, and, and let's read here a few verses. Tells us to follow God's example. King James says to be followers. Uh, I think the American Standard Version says to be imitators. Therefore, as dearly loved children, walk in the way of love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. And it goes on, but among you, there must not be even a hint. And I, I really do like the, the 
King James or New King James, maybe in the, the ASV version of this, but here in the NIV, it says, don't let there even be a hint, and I hope you're ready for this, of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, coarse joking, which are out of place but rather have thanksgiving be thankful for this you can be sure no immoral impure greedy person such a person is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of christ and of god let no one deceive you with empty words because such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Do not be partners with them. Uh, King James is do not partake. Uh, in verse 8 says, For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists of in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Find out what pleases the Lord. And we'll stop there. Um, I really enjoy the, the passages and the phrases where, where we see that, that the Lord talks about life and light. I love John chapter one, um, you get into, into verse two and three, and, and it talks about he is, he is the life, the light of men. I tell you that, that, that moves, that moves me. When I see someone come to the Lord, being moved with a, a godly sorrow, knowing they have missed the mark and conviction is there and it has a hold of their heart and to watch them pour out their soul to god i have seen i have seen grown men grown women pour their heart out to god i've seen young children just just pray and after god seeking after God, looking for that reconcile, looking for that restoration of that, that thing in life. They, they don't know how, they don't know, they don't understand you know, how to get there. But in that moment, God is shining some light in that life. And it's the beginning <laughs> but he gives us a manifestation of who he is with that light. I God in heaven. Repentance is an amazing thing. Uh, when someone uh, repents, and the repentance is, is, and I don't know if we can talk about it enough and I, we're not novices in this room tonight. Um, but I will tell you that that repentance it's not always just a series of words. Sometimes repentance can last for weeks, you know, days. Just a, a man or a woman or a person. God has dealt with them and moved in them about something in their life. And, and, and they are working through that with God's help the Lord helping them. I remember um, I was, I was eight years old when I first, I think when I first really felt uh, and heard God and was moved by the Lord. And when I was, uh, turn my, the dinger off here on my phone. I'm sorry for that. But, and then when I was 11, I was baptized in Jesus name. Um, 
received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. And my parents, and you know, they were raised in truth in this apostolic way, this Pentecostal way, and and they married <laughs> married young, and they moved to California, and they got away from the Lord. And I think they, I think they, probably intentionally made that move, and and really they they wanted to get a taste of the world, and they did for twenty years. Um, and so our family, my, my mother, my father, um, they be, the Lord did a mighty work in our heart and our life and, and brought them back, um, helped them. Um, and I don't want to bore you with all the, all the details, but I remember, uh, my dad, there are some things that took him some time. Um, you know, as, as his son, um, you know, you, you live in the same house and, and you see, you see some of that work and that conviction at work and, and it, that dying out, sometimes that dying out takes a minute. It takes a moment. It takes some time sometimes and, and but hang in there. Because God is doing a work and he'll see you through to the end. And when you get on the other side of it, there's victory. There's victory. And it's, this is this passage of scripture. This, this is what I feel in this scripture tonight. And it's, it's, it's not that the Lord sets a high bar, you know, that word perfect. And I'm going to speak to you a little bit. Uh, from some of my thoughts about this, but the word perfect, when you see, you know, you know, to be perfect, it's not, it's not, it doesn't mean the same thing. So when we say the word perfect, we think of somebody who has no fault and has no, no, there's, there's no, um, if you buy something, you buy a, you buy a car, you, better not have a scratch on it, but not have a dent or a ding or, or a neck or, you know, it's perfect, right? Showroom perfect. And, and apply that to, you know, trying to live life perfect. It's, it's not what it's talking about. It's talking about living in maturity. Um, honoring God with what you, what you have, what you have, what the Lord has done in you. And, uh, in uh, I believe it's in chapter three, cha maybe in, in the first part of chapter four. It it you know talks about to walk worthy of what he has what of, of what he has given to us to walk worthy, and it's that is you know it, it th that is when when the Lord says to us to walk worthy he is saying to us you know, follow after me walk after me that's what he's saying it's 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 not just a a list of things that that you say i if i do these i'm walking worthy no that's not it god says walk after me and you know follow after me and and my light will fill your life. It will, it will impact you. And God is again, He's He wants to be near. He wants to be close and and involve Himself in what we do. Amen. Um when a when a child is is growing you know when they're young and um you know they they are they're trying to you know trying to figure out how to you know how to how to grow and and you know mom and dad is correcting them and correcting them and correcting them and and you're just like wow you know <laughs> that's a lot but but finally that son becomes a man 
that girl comes a woman and you know they 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 have had instruction and it's time for them to stand and and to accept you know, responsibility um the responsibility as a as a as a daughter as a son and you know as as a person um you know to to show kindness to people and not just being on the receiving end anymore but now giving giving that love and giving that you know that that hand it's you know, spiritually um the Lord wants us to demonstrate that we're growing. Um, and, you know, so how, how do we, how do we show that, that, that consistency in maturity? And I, I think that there are some things that, you know, we talk about learned behavior, you know, learned behavior, you know, sometimes when we talk about learned behavior, we, we think of it maybe in a, in a negative light. You know, they've learned how they've learned. I didn't show them how to act like that. <laughs> it's they they put that on. So or, you know, they they are putting on those those attributes. And but but learned behavior also. It can be a good thing. It's you know, we when we follow us, the Lord, we we need we need to learn some things and you know in, in proverbs it talks about us above all get understanding right it gives it to us over and over above all get understanding and understanding is 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 un, it is having not just the knowledge but it's it's no it's having some knowing some of those nuances and some of those details and some of those little things and it, when you really look at a word, you break it down and, you know, it's you're getting an understanding about it. That's what happens when we come into maturity with the Lord, walking with him in light. Working, making a an intentional decision, an intentional decision. Um, choice that God would, you know, to follow and, and, and to abstain and to follow after him. Amen. I watched people over the last few days. And those of you that have maybe have traveled to conferences and trade shows and where people are, it's 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 the mixed bag i'll just tell you it's there are people there that you know they they come they come for the all the wrong reasons and you know you you see that um i thank god that and i thank the lord that that i have that light not perfect fallible When you when you have when you when you are mixing with unbelievers, and 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 not to be judgmental toward people, but you you can pretty much see what a what a tree is, what kind of a tree is there by just some of the fruit that is being shown and visible. Um, and when they when they see you drinking water <laughs> or when they when they see you it's it's you're set apart um and you and there's always opportunity but god will remind you that you walk in the light you're not in darkness God's given you um, good things, a new life, a better life. 
and in that we walk. In that we walk. Um, I think that um, I think the Lord is in Ephesians chapter five verse one. Be ye therefore. And he talks about again being a you know children. The children want to please their parents. They really do. They yeah, they, they can have a little honoriness, but but they, they do want to please. They they want to they want to try their best. And, and I think as 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 people of God, people of God, that we want to please God. We want to please the Lord. And you know, we we want to um we want that strength. We want that belief. We want that faith. What was it that the early church, that you know, that early church, our first church, the first day over 3,000 people were, were born of the water and the spirit. You know, they were baptized and they received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Um, over 3,000 people, first day. It was... And then from there, it talks about how they went from house to house, breaking bread in fellowship and in praise and prayers. Those are the things that they did. And God helped them. The Lord helped them. They became, they became um, sons of God. He gave them power to become. He told them, he said, you will, you will be a light you'll be a light to all the world in Jerusalem, Judea, to the uttermost parts of the earth, he said. Um, let's, I think we're kind of mapped up here. I don't get a little long here, but um, these are things that will carry us, that will help us. You know, he tells us, walk in love for a brother. Walk in love for a neighbor. Be an offering. Be a sacrifice. Be a sweet-smelling thing for God. But then, in verse 3, he says, and you will see it when you read the full passage, to put your guard up. Put up your guard, your spiritual guard. Because Satan will try and mix in those things that are impure. Verse 3 says fornication, right? And all uncleanness. Uncleanness, that word means moral impurity. Moral impurity. Verse 4 talks about filthiness. (laughs) He's not talking about soap and water. He's talking about filthiness of the flesh. He's talking about sin. And what it means, it, it says it's an obscenity an utterance or an act that strongly offends the prevalent morality of the times. It offends, um, you know, the, the, the standard of the day. Keep that guard up. Amen. Lord, we love you today.